now joined by Clint Boyer, driver of the number 14 Toco Warranty Ford. We'll open the floor to questions. If you have a question, please raise a hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. Start in the back. Yeah, Clint Tim is playing pitch stop radio over here. Back over here. Hey. hey, Clint. With this new tapered spacer and this bigger spoiler that we have here, do you think it's going to be better to be out front leading in the final lap here, or do you think you need to be second, third, or what? Let me tell you, it's always better to be out front. Doesn't matter where you're, Talladega or Texas or anywhere in between. Um, out front's where everybody wants to be. Out front's the hardest place to get to, and out front's the hardest place to stay. Um, so many things can happen on the last lap at one of these plate tracks like this. You have to be you know the first guy yes we've seen the videos of you know myself even where i passed uh you know jeff burton coming to the line my teammate kevin harvick um you know made a pass uh coming to the line those those scenarios can happen and as long as the caution doesn't come out before then can happen um but you know there's like i said there's so many different scenarios that could take that win from you if you were in second place thinking you're in the catbird seat just chopping at the bit to slingshot by him coming off of four or on the front straightaway and um because of a caution or something like that you never get that opportunity so out front's always a place to be doesn't matter where you're at Jacobson with Speed Sport Magazine. Uh, it's funny that you referenced the pass of Burton because that was kind of where I was going with my question. I, I, I don't know if you can ever truly enjoy this place because of how unpredictable it is. But well, with hell the... yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you win, when you when you win, I know it's enjoy. During the if race... you woke up every day of your life and knew what the future hold, that'd be a pretty boring life. That's what's cool about Talladega. Um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of people wake up in the morning wishing uh, like the night before it didn't happen at Talladega. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, nonetheless, you know, I hope my, my hangover's uh, Monday morning celebrating a Sunday victory. Do you enjoy this style of racing, though, with, with it, it, it being kind of more mental in the draft the last couple of years? I think you have to. I think, you you know, every track, every scenario, every place we go, short tracks, medium, you know, mile and a half, uh, intermediate tracks. Uh, um, these these plate tracks, they're all you know have their own challenges in their own sort of way, and, and certainly um, the team aspect I I think is is played out probably more than any uh, on these plate tracks like Talladega. You know you're you're working so hard, um, you know with your spotter and, and trying to to visualize. Um, this scenario that you need to be in with the right cars and the right place for that magical moment, that magical push. And then all of a sudden, hey, is that push going to be there? Is he going to try to get around me? Is he going to try to side draft off of me? Uh, is he going to stay with me? You know, And I think that's where the strategy comes down to it, is, is making sure that you do a good enough job and put yourself in a scenario where that car behind you has no choice um, but to benefit from pushing you. Uh, you know, And that's that's the key to... to um, you know, to having success here, and, and you know, hey, good old-fashioned luck goes a long ways here sometimes, you know, when the um, the big one happens or something chaotic happens throughout the race. These stages has really compiled some racing within this race. It's not just all about that end. Um, you know, as these stages come to an end, uh, you know, those first and second stages, you really see the intensity pick up, kind of uh, gives you a glimpse of what you're going to see at the end. Um, and some carnage can happen at those. So you got to be be careful and cautious enough and lucky enough to get it through there uh, to get your points. Um, but again, just answering his question, where's the place to be at Talladega? No different than anywhere. It's out front. If you're ahead of all that, it um, doesn't matter what happens in the mirror. Go to Kelly. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Clint, um, you come in here kind of on a roll with your finishes lately, and I know you and Kevin had said to start the year that you guys were just kind of survive the West Coast, build, get better. Do you feel like you, SHR is now going in that right direction? It can start putting the cars on the track to compete with Penske and Gibbs? Well, you know, I think the, the West Coast thing, the start of our season is, is just one or the other. Everybody, you know, works hard in the off season, puts in the due diligence, um, you know, and, and – works hard to, to make sure that we hit, you know, uh, the ground running. And, and sometimes that doesn't work, you know. Uh, last year with the Stuart Haas cars, 
we did. We rolled through the West Coast swing, came out a handful of confidence, didn't really need to work on much. We had a lot of strengths, had a few weaknesses that we needed to polish up, um, but we really were uh, strong early and, and got that points base established early and, and um, you know, was, was that, rode that wave on through the summer months. Uh, this year, we, we missed, man. We, we weren't exactly where we wanted to be, where we thought we would be, where the plan was um, through the, the West Coast swing. But once you get back um, with a group like we have, um, a group of racers, you know, in the trenches at Stuart Haas Racing, you knew it wouldn't take long to, to get to the punch and, and get our cars right. And, and you know, um, meeting after meeting after meeting, um, talk after talk, and, and, you know, the people. It all comes back to the people working uh, tirelessly to, to get our cars turned around. And I think the results, uh, you know, the last month really proved it. Um, you know, knocked on the door pretty hard myself. And, and Kevin's been running well. Uh, Eric's been running well. Our cars are good. Um, you know, it's it's uh, exciting times right now. It's, you know, that, that first first group of, of tracks is behind us and um, learned what we needed to learn and, and put it to good use. Thanks to Bob. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Um, not looking at this week, but looking ahead. We need to look at this week. <laughs> this week hasn't happened yet, Bob. <laughs> well, I'm curious, and it's also looking back. When now we're looking back. A little bit of everything. Well, damn, Bob, which one is it? Well, it's a little bit of everything, which should be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're um, going everywhere. With, with this 500, at the 550 horsepower races, there was some speculation at the start of the year that there'd be more wrecks, that there would, that... What do you want me to do, Bob? I, I'm i curious. Can wreck them all? No, I, I'm just curious why there there hasn't been. I, what, I what, what what about this package? I can't help it but be a smart ass. I just, no. It's what you're good at. And when I, when I, I'm only good at a few things. i got to stick with it. Um, the answer is this. I don't think you can plan or you can – you can never look at a I, – I, yes, I thought that the 550 package would create exactly what it did on the restarts and things like that. I thought the uh, the intensity would be very very strong on the restarts on a mile and a half in particular. We all thought that you know we would be bunched up, and anytime you bunch cars up, just like we see at Daytona and Talladega, that nine times out of ten that leads to some sort of carnage on the racetrack. I think the downforce aspect of of the package that we're running um, with our cars this year is is a big part of that. I think the tire is probably even a bigger part of that. Um, the cars drive really well, and I think the points proven when you put them four or five wide on restarts at a mile and a half track, wide open, um, and still don't crash, they're pretty stable underneath of you. So, you know, yes, I am a little bit surprised uh, at how well some of the tracks, some of these restarts, and some of the crazy, chaotic scenarios that we've seen, because they've been there. Um, you know, haven't hasn't resulted in some some wrecks because I guarantee you, I've looked at a few of them ahead of me out there on the West Coast when I run, wasn't running very well and saw some things in front of me where I thought, well, this is going to hurt, and it never did. Um, but I think a, a big part of that is how stable the cars are, and and you know the tires are very predictable. Any additional questions for Clint? Come up here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's they're just more stable and they're, they're, they drive good, you know what I mean? Clint, with, uh, this is Rich Colbert from the Motor Race Network with Mother's Day coming up here pretty soon. Talk about your mom and the influence she's had on your career. Um, you know, I think moms, when I think of my mom, I think of Ponca City, Oklahoma. Um, I don't know if any of you have been in Oklahoma, but the dirt's red. Where all three uh, of us brothers were racing motorcycles and and um, racing two or three classes, we're down there for a week. And now that I'm older and have kids, it's hell for a parent. I, I couldn't imagine going through and having three kids racing uh, all these different classes and having to keep track of that and when to be up there. Um, it rained and it was muddy. And I remember my mom had this. She was like the coolest girl in the pits because my dad found her a. Uh, like this miniature washing machine and she was washing all that red dirt out of those clothes and trying to keep everything clean and you had white boots and was keeping those clean I'm, i'll always remember that growing up how hard they worked to uh to get us you know to the not only to the racetrack but once you're there oh my gosh it's a lot of work um and and they were doing that all themselves and and Warren's, that wasn't Kansas, by the way. We grew up in Kansas. We were raised in Oklahoma, Texas, all over the place. And, and you know, I mean, she's uh, 
my parents owned a business together and ran that together and, and raised, you know, three boys. So we always raced. We always uh, traveled up and down the road in a motor home. Everybody always asks, you know, how, how do you get used to living in a motor home? It's like, hell, it's the only thing I've ever lived in. Um, you know, a nice house is, uh, is, is something, but there ain't nothing sleeps better than a 40-foot Winnebago. Additional questions for Clint? Might not be a Winnebago anymore, but you get the gist. Thanks, guys. Let's go put on a show, huh?